Hello. Welcome to Calvary International Christian Center. Weekly live chat. You said it's nuggets from the sofa. And um, I truly believe that we are receiving some good nuggets here and there. Some we can use right now. Some we may have to store it for when we need it. But I pray that you are encouraged by it and um, growing in your faith. And we are assisting in a little way. The word of God, even in this lockdown season, must still be preached, must still be taught, must still be shared. And um, I know that on uh, all our different social media platforms, we have so much, but we are spoiled for choice. That is not necessarily a bad thing, but I also pray that it doesn't make us become lazy Christians. The essence of tuning in, logging in, is to receive an addition to what you are hopefully doing in your own private space and in your own personal walk with God. And we come to highlight certain things or bring certain things to your attention that will help you. So like I'd always say, you know, don't just be scrolling channel to channel, face to face, but become more targeted in what you need what will actually help you to grow yeah. what will help you to grow in your faith and I pray that we are part of that for you everybody and um, the meals they like to eat some like fatty food some like um, greens some like vegetables and um, fruits some like oily food you know theoretically uh, uh, fried foods are always nicer than boiled foods. I mean, it's a fact. We, we don't need to make any argument. Are they healthy for you? That's a whole different conversation. That, that's, that's a totally new. So we're not even going to go there. So don't argue with me. Amen. If you like, boil your rice and fry your rice and you, you, you see the difference. So. But sometimes you have to accept that you need to eat something healthy and something nutritious something not just that is tasty but will actually have you know they'll tell you that does it have omega-3 does it have vitamin a vitamin b i pray that the messages that you're hearing from this sofa are not just greasy food i pray that they are healthy meals i pray that you know sometimes when you come we are serving what spinach and you know sometimes we are serving asparagus sometimes we are serving you know steamed rice <laughs> Occasionally, you're going to get some fried food. <laughs> but um, today is not one of those days. <laughs> we are hopefully going to bring to a pause our um, chat on um, abuse for a season. I told you that when the lockdown is over, if you are in the West Yorkshire region, then you can just come into our services. If not, wherever you are, you can still stream online because we are going to go all the way with it and um, welcome once again and before we enter into the word let's just spend a few moments praying over the last couple of chats I believe that some of us you know have been I've had to confront certain issues have had to address certain issues have had to deal with them have had to we have brought it to the forefront. Some of us, maybe we are parents and we haven't been able to deal with this. Some of us, we are, you know, workers, maybe our boss, whatever. It doesn't matter how it has affected you or how it has impacted you. For some of us, we've never gone through that, but it has brought us some knowledge and wisdom to help others and to become more aware and to protect ourselves and to protect others. So I just want us to pray and commit ourselves into the hands of God. I want us to pray for our children. I want us to pray for our parents. I want us to pray for our spouses. You know, some of us, we are living with spouses who have previously been abused, and sometimes it is not easy to manage, 
you know, some of the outcomes, but God is able to do all things. So you just want to pray and just commit yourself, commit your household, commit your family. And if you're one that you are having to relearn and retune and change certain behaviors and habits, I want you to also pray for yourself that indeed God's grace, God's grace and God's wisdom will be your portion to help you to be, help you to be a better parent, to be a better director, to be a better manager, to be a better leader, to be a better pastor, you know, to be a better person who is in authority. You know, if you're a child, you also want to pray for yourself. If you are one who has had any of these experiences, you want to pray for yourself that, Lord, I am better now. Lord, thank you. Your word has brought me healing. Your word continues to strengthen me. Your word continues to lift me up. Indeed, Lord, clean out our closets. Clean out our closets. Clean out our closets. We clean out our closets, O Lord. Mako shataba. Iyabo shatara. Mako rabala. For we know that anything that is hidden, the devil will use. Anything that is covered, anything that is in the dark, the devil will manipulate and use it. Father, we bring everything into the light. We open ourselves up unto you, O Lord. We open ourselves up unto you, O Lord. Ah, Mako Shatala. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds. Cleanse our spirit. Purify us, Lord. Purify us, Lord. Oh, Mashataraba. Ah, speak over your home. Speak over your home. If you live in a home that abuse has taken place before, speak over it, declare over it that now the spirit of God dwells in that home. The spirit of God rules in the affairs of that home. Makaba shatarababa Eyaraba shotarabalabo Ah, makoraba shatarabalababa Ah, God set us indeed as watchmen, as watchmen, as watchmen over your people, over your children. Oh, Mashatar. No young girl shall be abused in so far as lies within us and the grace that you have placed upon us. Mako Shatara. Moka Barabalababa. Oh, Mako Shatara Balabalababe. Iyara Bashotora Baba. We drive out every foul spirit. We drive out every foul spirit. Mako Shatara Baba. Iya la boshata, makora bara, makora bara baba, makoshata ra, ah maroda bara baba, oh makara baba. We pray for liberation, mako. We pray for freedom, 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 freedom. I kabashata bara bashi kabatoro bala bala babe, iya la la baka bara bashata bala bala babe, ah ramasho toro basha. Makaraba. Today I really want us to spend a few moments and pray and pray. We have heard so much about abuse. We have heard so much about it. We have studied so much. We have looked at so many areas about it. The blessing we have is that we have a God who hears us. We have a God who will do exceedingly abundantly above what we are even praying for. And Lord, today we are praying for healing. Makosha, we are praying for deliverance. Deliver, O oh Lord. Deliver the brokenhearted. Deliver, O oh Lord. The scarred. Makosha tala. Makosha tala. May they no longer be scarred. May they, those scars become stars in their lives, O oh Lord. Makaba shikaba taraba laba laba ba. E makora mashata raba ba. E makara baba ba. E makora rara kede bede bede. E makosha taraba laba laba la. Le la la de 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 ne de de ne de 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 de. E makosho toro ba shata. Oh rama shata raba laba ba. Ke ya la hibo de bebe. Ah, the eyes of the Lord they watch over those who do right. His ears are open. The Lord will never turn his face against us. Oh, 
Oh, Maka, Father, for even those who are living with the guilt of having abused others. Father, for those who are living with that guilt, I pray for mercy. I pray for mercy. Father, help them to forgive themselves. Help them to forgive themselves. We pray for total repentance. We pray for total repentance. In you, you cast no one away. In you, you put no one away. Mako Shatarababa. Iyalaba Korama Shataraba. Lama ko shatara ba la ba la ba la ba ba he kara ba la ba ba ke ye de be de be re oh ramashi kabata Father we thank you we bless you Lord we hallow your name just worship the Lord thank you thank you Father we hold our brothers hand we hold our sisters hand. We squeezed, we virtually squeezed that hand. That it is. Well. When peace like a river had
Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Thank you, Lord. We're going to bring the topic to a pause, but I want to end on this. We're going to read Luke 10. The Bible says, I'm going to read from 30 to 35 from the NLT. It says, Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I am here. Amen. This story of the good Samaritan as we normally describe it. It teaches us something that I think is relevant for all those of us. I told you that now all of us are part of the solution. All of us are part of the solution. Every one of us is part of the solution. And the scripture is showing us that, you know, when you are part of the solution, you have to be fully part of the because I'm just I just feel that the priest and the shepherd as they went across the road I, I just sense that they were praying that oh Lord send this my help I just feel that you know if it was a Pentecostal charismatic then I'm sure they were binding and losing the thieves who had hit the man as they called but today what I wanted to just leave us with is the fact that you know Pity, empathy, and compassion are all needed when we want to bring solution. A lot of the time, pity is so easy to access. In fact, the word pity, it says it means the feeling of sorrow, sadness, regret, and sometimes having a small amount of compassion. But Pity is normally feeling sorry for somebody, you know. Being sad when you hear somebody's story. It's like, oh no, did this happen to you? That is pity. And pity is very easy. Then empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Being sensitive to the feelings and experience of others, either the past or present. It also means having capacity for others. So, Pity, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Empathy means that now you have understood to a certain extent what they're actually going through and it sort of makes sense why we need to deal with this issue. It sort of makes sense why abuse should not take place and now you understand that it is a wrong thing. It shouldn't be, you know, allowed and it shouldn't be hidden. It shouldn't. Then compassion means to have severe pity or sympathetic pity and to be distressed together with a desire to alleviate the source of the um, pain and also to have empathy. So when you have compassion, then it means that, yes, pity, empathy, but above all, you have a desire and then you partake in alleviating the source of distress. Do you understand? So normally, pity should just be the one that should trigger the empathy and the compassion. Pity should, 
Because a lot of the time we stay in the pity. Those of us who maybe are helping people have been abused and people who may have gone through abuse like to even stay in a place of pity, feeling sorry for themselves. And then we are also feeling sorry for them. Then what? Because if you stay in pity, you can never rise up. You can never stand. You don't gain strength from pity. You don't gain, you get, in fact, if you stay in pity too long, you get weaker. That is why even when you mourn for a loss and you stay in a mourning state, you get weaker. Do you understand? All those things are supposed to trigger then what? Do you understand? That is why, okay, I digress a little bit. That is why when you get a broken heart and you cry a little bit, you have to get out of it. Do you understand? You can't cry forever. At some point, you have to wipe your tears and say, then what? Okay, I just, I digress. But when you have pity, it should trigger empathy. Because now that you're feeling sorry that this is going on, or my brother or my sister has gone through this, then what can I do? And when, when that has been triggered, now try and understand. I pray that all the teachings we have had has helped you to change your outlook on certain things. We, you know, for some of us, we all, some people always thought, well, you, you know, you exposed yourself to an abuse. You brought yourself to the place of abuse. You see, it's because of what you have done, what you did. You are the wrong place. At the, you know, all kinds of strange things. I pray that at least now we know that any form of abuse is wrong. But I pray also that now we have an understanding that not only is it wrong, but it has to change. And it starts with us. And for those of us who are in the faith and who are Christians, we have a responsibility. We are winning souls for Christ. Let's win lives also. Do you understand? Because till you die, you are living on this earth. So we are there to also help people to rise above their pain. And if you're one who has pitied yourself because of all that has been done to you or all that you have gone through, that is coming to an end. We are re-educating ourselves. We are re-educating our mind. And we are getting a place of compassion. That is why, you know, Scripture always tells us that in... Um, now I want to read the Psalm 72 that I didn't read the last time, Psalm 72, verse 12 to 14. The TPT says, He will care for the needy and the neglected, and when they cry to him for help, the humble and helpless will know his kindness, for with a father's compassion, he will save their souls. They will be rescued from tyranny and torture, for their lifeblood is precious in his eyes. The father's compassion. In fact, a lot of the time, when even scripture is talking about pity, you see that right after the pity, a certain act is taken. So they are not just showing pity, but out of it, now something is done about the situation. In Genesis 4, the Bible says in verse 9 and 10, And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. We are each other's keeper. We are supposed to look out for each other. We are supposed to keep an eye on each other. See, and when we say that, we are not talking about friends. We are talking about every situation, whether it's family, whether it's, uh, what do you call it, church, whether it's in a relation, whether it's at work, whether it's in school, whether it's in uni, high school. We are supposed to be each other's keeper. And we can only do that if we have compassion. If we have compassion. If we have compassion. Let us, you know, stop dwelling on pity. Some people enjoy having pity parties. And they'd like to associate with others who will also come and, you know, put some more pity into the fire. But pity, when you stay in pity, you don't do much. When you stay in pity... You don't, um, you don't receive your freedom. Pity actually sits on you. And remember what I said the last time. 
whatever the abuse is, you have to stand on it. It doesn't have to sit over you or lie over you. You have to stand on it. So we cannot. And once you have empathy and compassion, then now we have capacity. Because when you have compassion, you are not going to be, oh, get over it. Oh, it's okay. It's in the past. Or listen, just walk. When you have compassion, then it means that it doesn't matter how long it's going to take for the person to rise up and be strong and be saying, you are going to be there. As a leader, as a pastor, it's not, you're not just going to be there to, you know, I've given you four scriptures, just take it. You, are, you see them go back, come forward, go, you think, oh, they're okay now, then it looks like they're not okay. Yes. When there's compassion and there's empathy, we are able to sustain the help. We are able to, you know, then it doesn't come, well, I've been keeping an eye on them. Every time I tell you, don't go to that place, you go. When I say, usually, I'm tired. You go. If she gets hurt, she gets hurt. Then when she gets hurt, then what? I told you so. I told you so it should not be your vocabulary. You are your brother's keeper. You are your brother's keeper. Today, I just wanted to declare some confession of us because I truly believe that let me read a scripture to you and then I will declare this confession over you because I believe that anytime you can rewind, you can you know, go back and just listen to it again and again. Matthew 10, verse 26, the Bible says that, but don't be afraid of those who threaten you, for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. Don't be afraid of those who threaten you, for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and this is the time. And don't be threatened by it. Don't be you know, don't be afraid. Yeah, I'm telling somebody that don't be afraid of even the person who has been, who was or is abusing you. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Yeah, because everything now, now that the Lord has brought us to this place where we are receiving such boldness and such courage, don't be threatened. Romans 10, the Bible says in verse 11 to 17, as the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him? if they have never heard about him. And that is why we are talking. Because the more we talk about it, the more you will believe. And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell, uh, tell them without being sent? We are all being sent. We are all part of the solution now. That is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. You do not have to stay in that situation again. But not everyone welcomes the good news. Really? Would there be anyone on this planet not happy that we'll have abuse brought out in the open and bring it to an end? <laughs> Verse 16 says that, Lord, who has believed our message? Verse 17. So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. Amen. Acts 2.21 says that same thing again. That anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And it says that faith comes by hearing. And hearing. Which means that we need to keep declaring it. Talking about it renewing our mind, changing the patterns, changing the patterns, you know, freeing our thoughts, freeing our thoughts, liberating it, standing on the truth, you know, 
changing the voices that we hear, the voices, the inner voices, the outer voices, changing them and speaking and confessing that which is right. So I have my strength of confession for you and I want all of us to say it and we're going to declare all of it and when we finish we're going to say amen and if you are somebody who has risen from a place of sadness or sorrow or pity or whatever I want you to be able to whether you're in your living room or wherever you are just shake yourself up and you know you can shout so make this confession with me as we close Say, I allow the love of God to sweep through me, cleanse me, and heal me. I am worthwhile. I am whole. I love and approve of myself because God approves of me. I am loving and I am lovable. I am accepting of myself. I am a divine expression of God's love. I am in a new season. Daily, I discover how wonderful God has made me. I am capable. I am competent and I am important. Each day is my blessing. The world I now have is a safe and a friendly place. I am bold and I am courageous. I am succeeding and I am rejoicing. I accept all blessings all the blessings that life has to offer me. And I take back, I take back everything that was taken from me. I release all that I no longer need in my life. I release all that I no longer need in my life. I release the need to be perfect and I choose love over hate. The past is not forgotten, but it is over. The past is not forgotten, but it is over. I open myself to God's love. The Holy Spirit regulates all my emotions. And the child in me is set free and growing in ease. This is my time and this is my space to live in God's abundance. I move beyond every limitation. It is okay to express joy and to express laughter. The truth has set me free. And the truth will keep me free. I am grateful. I am content. And I am blessed. I am divinely protected. I am safe. And I am at peace. I stand on my new foundation in Christ. I stand tall. I stand free. I stand loved. I am building trust and going beyond every family limitation every past and present limitations and miracles are happening to me every day and I end with this this is the Lord telling us he says I am the Lord your God and I approve this confession in Jesus name amen God bless you I pray that we have somehow brought some light and understanding to this topic and may the Lord continue this healing process and may the Lord bring you to good people and to good environments and may you become a source of blessing for others and a deliverer of others in Jesus name God bless you and see you again next time